One, two, three, hold. Two, three, Hi guys, today we're going to replace the brake fluid in 2016 Scient. You see the brake reservoir is located right here. I'll quickly show you the tools required for this. First of all, we'll use DOT3 brake fluid. We have a couple of different types here. We'll use just one, I'm just showing you as an example. Also, we'll use this uh, syringe with a hose to suck out the fluid from the reservoir. And we'll use this tube to bleed our uh, brake fluid from the bleeder bolts. And we'll use this type of the adapter. It just makes our life a little bit easier. It doesn't come off from the bolt. Uh, we have two different wrenches here one is 10 millimeters and the second one is 8 millimeters the 10 millimeter one is required for the rear calipers and uh, the 8 millimeter one is required for the front calipers and i'll tell you torque right away for the rear bolts the torque is 8 foot pounds and for the front the torque is 6 foot pounds the brake fluid should be replaced once every three years and today we will use the pressure bleeding uh, method uh, with two people. This will ensure uh, the uh, proper bleeding and it will also get rid of any air that you have in the system. We won't be replacing the brake fluid in the ABS module which is located right there. For this you need a special scanner and uh, in general the amount of uh, brake fluid in the ABS module is not significant and won't affect the lifespan of the new brake fluid. You do need to replace uh, the brake fluid in the module in case if you replace the module itself. Then in this case it is necessary. We need to remove this plastic cover above our brake fluid reservoir. For this we first have to remove the uh, weather stripping on this side and then uh, the whole cover will actually come out. Next you need to look at the level of the brake fluid. Currently it's um, slightly below the maximum and uh, when we um, fill the new uh, brake fluid we have to ideally keep uh, uh, this level uh, the same. The reason for that is that uh, our brake pads uh, wear down, that's why the brake fluid goes lower and if we top it off all the way then the next time we replace the brake pads it will rise even more. So this is why it is important to keep it at the same level. Now we'll need to remove this cap and as you can see it also says here dot 3 the brake fluid that we need and inside you will also see a filter which needs to be removed as well we'll use a small screwdriver to help us to remove the filter You have to turn it counterclockwise and lift up at the same time. This is how our brake fluid looks like. As you can see it's quite dirty, there are some even hard deposits can be seen I believe from here. Uh, this is why it is important to replace it every three years. We'll use this syringe to get as much, as, uh, as much brake fluid as we can out of the reservoir. When you deal with brake fluid, uh, be very careful, make sure it doesn't uh, splash around because if it gets on plastic or the paint it will damage it. We will use this filler tube as an extension to reach even further inside the reservoir. Again, the idea guys is to get as much as you can. You won't be able to get all of it, but try to get as much as you can. And this is how much fluid we managed to get out of the reservoir. 
here you have a couple of DOT3 brake fluid bottles. Uh, you can also use Toyota original brake fluid and you can safely use OEM ones as well since they all follow the same standards. We'll probably just use one of these bottles today. We have the second one just in case and we'll start with this one since this one has a round cap and it easily fits inside our reservoir. And this is how we will leave it when we uh, bleed the brake fluid. The second one will work as well, perfectly fine, but the design of the bottle is slightly different and it's just not as stable in the reservoir because of this uh, thing on the right. We'll make two small holes on each side. This will uh, reduce the chance of the uh, fluid spilling. And uh, now you have to carefully insert it this way into the into the reservoir and now we have constant supply of uh, the brake fluid this means that we don't have to manually add the uh, brake fluid when we bleed our brakes and this also prevents the air from uh, going into the system as well once the fluid reaches approximately this level uh, the flow from the bottle will stop and uh, once we bleed our brakes, as soon as the level goes lower, the new fresh brake fluid will automatically uh, fill our reservoir. Next we will connect the tube to our uh, bleeder bolt. We'll start with the right rear side. And uh, in this vehicle, for the rear we are using uh, 10 millimeter range for the front will be using 8 millimeter range we'll also use this adapter this one makes our life easier it doesn't come off from the bleeder uh, bolt and as for the tube the interior diameter of uh, this tube is one fourth of an inch and as you can see it fits perfectly on our adapter we will use the same container to bleed our fluid. Just need to use the cap and uh, make a small hole inside it and put the tube through. Now we can remove the rubber plug on top of the uh, bleeder and connect our adapter to it. The next step will be to press the brake pedal a few times then press and hold and at the same time we'll have to open the bleeder bolt and let the fluid out one two three hold one two three hold and as you can see the pedal goes down all the way Snow. one more time one two Three, hold. And keep, keep pushing. One, two, three, hold. One, two, three, hold. Еще раз. And one more time. One, two. Three, hold. Now the final tightening of the uh, bleeder bolt. Ideally the torque has to be 8 foot pounds. But we will manually tighten it right now. And uh, after we do all four wheels and after the test drive, we will assess if we have any leaks and we might have to retighten the bolts. This is how the level of the fluid changed in our uh, reservoir. Um, you have to keep bleeding until you see the uh, fresh, uh, clean fluid coming through the system. In our case it took us uh, about 10 cycles. And again you have to repeat it on each of the wheels. And this is the dust cap on the bleeder bolt on the left side, on the left wheel, remove it as well. 
and basically we will repeat the whole process again on this wheel. The tube goes on and now we can start pumping and bleeding the fluid. One, two, three, hold. One, two, three, hold. Now we can tighten the bolt and uh, remove the tube. This is the change in the amount of our brake fluid again. And uh, uh, again we did about 10 cycles to bleed the fluid in our left rear wheel. Now we'll be working on the right front wheel. And for easier access we'll turn the steering wheel all the way to the right. Now you can remove the dust cap from the bolt. Now our adapter is going to go through the wheel first and then it goes on top of the bolt. And we will start pumping again. One, two, three, hold! One, two, three, hold. One, two, three, hold. Now we can tighten the bolt. In this case, uh, the torque is different. It's six foot pounds, eight foot pounds in the back, and uh, six foot pounds in the front. But as I said before, we will manually tighten it first and then test it after we drive a little bit. Also, we use the 8 mm range opposed to 10 in the back. And now we're ready to do our last uh, wheel, left front. Again, start the vehicle and uh, turn the steering wheel all the way to the left. And same idea, the tube will go through the wheel. One, two, three, hold. One, two, three, hold. One, two, three, hold. You sure? One, two, three, hold. Now we can remove the tube. And now you can tighten the bolt. Again the torque is six foot pounds in this case. And this is the final amount of the fluid that we have left after bleeding all four wheels. And also as you can see the level of the fluid did not change at all and we still have some fluid left. To remove this bottle properly, we'll first have to set up uh, some regs around the uh, reservoir. And uh, the goal here is to do it uh, quite quickly. Then this way there will be minimum fluid splashing around. And this is a clean fluid. Look at the difference. In the bottle we still have around this much fluid left. Right now we will close uh, the reservoir, we will do it without the filter for now, just the rubber cap and we will adjust the level of the fluid after we do test drive and make sure we don't have any leaks. Right now we are doing a short test drive, our goal is uh, to press the brake pedal a few times, make some stops from moderate braking to hard braking, so basically anywhere from this to to a harder uh, stops 
this will tell us hard like this so as you can see vehicle is braking and this will also tell us if they have any leaks uh, shortly also when you do these tests make sure there are no other vehicles behind your car all right and this is our bleeder bolt out of the test drive and as you can see it is completely dry which is perfect this means we don't have to tighten it anymore in case if you see any brake fluid around the bleeder bolt and uh, then you will have to first use a brake cleaner to clean this fluid and then you'll have to tighten the bolt uh, a little bit more use very small increments we're talking about a couple of degrees the reason is because if you over tighten this bolt you may damage the caliper and in this case yes you have to replace the whole caliper after you have cleaned it and uh, tightened the bolt uh, you'll have to do another test drive and test it again until you don't see any more uh, wet spots around around the bleeder bolt and don't forget to reinstall the rubber uh, caps which will protect our bolt from dirt and dust the left side is completely dry as well and i will reinstall the cap and now we can switch to the front our front right is dry as well uh, just for demonstration we're going to show you first of all how this uh, brake cleaner looks like this one is abs uh, sensor safe and right now we'll show you how to clean any brake fluid that may leak from your bleeder bolts and this should be enough to clean any uh, brake fluid and of course the rubber plug goes back on the last step we can uh, reinstall our filter inside the reservoir and we'll also remove some of the brake fluid so first we will suck some of the fluid as you remember the level was slightly below maximum this is how uh, far we have to go now as well and now it pretty much has reached the same level as it was uh, prior to our uh, bleeding procedure and the filter goes back in push and turn basically that's it now we can close the cover our brake fluid replacement in the sign is complete thank you guys for watching today we used uh, the pressure bleeding method which uses two people there are other ways to do this operation uh, one of them would be the gravity bleeding which requires only uh, one person is slightly different uh, it will work as i said with one person and in case if your braking system is healthy and you only need to replace the fluid you don't have any air in the system in this case it will work but we will show you this procedure in our next brake fluid replacement video thank you guys for watching again we'll see you in the next one